Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are conducting the series Vector Algebra and today's topic of discussion is Gauss Divergence Theorem. This video aims at exploring the physical significance of Gauss Divergence Theorem. After you watch this video, you will be clear with the concept and this will be very much helpful for your Vector Algebra learning purposes. Before we move on to the main topic, here is something about myself and I request you to subscribe to my channel for more updates on engineering mathematics, vector algebra, COMSOL multiphysics and other engineering and research related topics. We will start with a quick recap of our previous video which we made on divergence concept. So what we discussed is if we have a positive divergence then there is a point of source from where the vectors are going outwards or it is diverging and for a negative divergence we should have a point of sync where the vectors are coming and meeting at a particular point and we have also discussed that this is not necessary that all the vectors should be pointing outwards for a positive divergence or it should be pointing inwards for a negative divergence it could be a combination of both like in this case there are more vectors which are positive pointing inwards than the vectors which are pointing outwards. So as a whole there are more vectors inwards and so it's a negative divergence. And this was a positive divergence where we have multiple vectors pointing outwards and only two vectors pointing inwards. And it could also nullify each other. In this case the vectors pointing outwards is equal to the vector pointing inwards and that is why it is giving a zero divergence. Now once we recapitulate this concept, let us now discuss about the Gauss Divergence Theorem. So, initially we should look at the mathematical perspective of the equation. So, here we can see uh, we have a balance between a volume integration and a surface integration. So, some vector quantity that is being balanced by a volumetric integration and a surface integration. Then you have to look at volumetric integration of what? So volumetric integration of divergence of a vector say a vector where a is given by this ax i cap ay j cap and az k cap sorry it would be az and this is equated with dot product of a vector and ds vector where ds vector is any short area on a physical space. Now we were talking about divergence and point of source and point of sync. If you visualize in a three dimensional space, you could have multiple points or mathematically you could have infinite number of points and each point will have different di or may have different divergences. Like suppose you consider at this particular point. So it could be a point of source. So it would have a positive divergence. Or you focus on this point this could be a point of sync this could have a zero divergence so you can have multiple combinations of divergences so we have to look at each and every point and then if we sum up then we'll get a volumetric integration of divergence in this uh, in this closed space now this closed space could be an irregular shape as well so we do not know how the physical space will look like so we should or not always consider a rectangular space but it is always better to start with a rectangular space for the visualization purposes. Now uh, we'll try to make the concept of divergence and dot product or dot product of a vector with a uh, with a vector area clear in the next slide. So dot product between a particular vector a and uh, ds that is the area is nothing but influx or outflux. Suppose you have this particular three dimensional space and we are looking at a particular surface at this surface you can understand from the figure. This is the surface we are looking at and the thing is we can see there are few vectors uh, which is going in the positive x direction. We have considered this as x direction and a few vectors uh, which are going in the negative x direction. So as a whole you can see from this particular surface mind it this is not from a point this is from a surface. So from this particular surface we have more vectors which are going outwards than the vectors which are coming inwards. So we have a flux of going out that means we have more vectors 
which is going in the positive x direction. So in the positive x direction, we can say there is a flux, positive flux. In the other figure, uh, you can see there are more vectors which is going in the negative x direction and two vectors going in the positive x direction. So we can say in this particular area or in this particular plane, we have a negative, never negative flux. So mind it, whenever I am talking uh, about a surface, I am calling it a flux. And when I will be talking about a point, I will be calling it a divergence. So this concept should be clear to you in order to understand this Gauss divergence theorem. Now uh, we have taken another direction, say this is z direction and say this particular plane and in this case two vectors are coming in the negative z direction and four vectors are going in the positive z direction. So on this particular plane we have a influx or positive influx along z direction. In this case, we have taken a negative in negative influx, you can say, uh, because more vectors are pointing in the negative z direction than the vectors pointing in the positive z direction. So this is a concept of dot product of a vector A and D A. So now the thing is, this arrow lines indicate nothing but the components of vector along the respective direction. So as we are considering the x direction, this arrow lines basically indicate AX. And when we are considering Z direction, this arrow lines basically consider AZ or AZ, a scalar component of the vector. Now, what is this DS signifying? DS signifying, if you take a very small area on it and if you calculate whether it has a positive or negative influx, then uh, you know about the ds area and instead of ds if you if you consider the entire area then you have information about the entire area because a flux is related to area so if you are taking ds then you are considering flux in this particular ds area if you take an integration of this dot product on a particular surface you will have information about the influx or outflux on that particular surface so I think uh, the concept of dot product and the integration of this dot product is little bit clear to you. Now coming to divergence. Suppose you have this three dimensional space and if you look at different points as I have already mentioned, you can have different scenarios like at this particular point we see the vectors are pointing outward so it has a positive divergence. And at this point, all the vectors are meeting at a point, so it has a negative divergence or it is a kind of sink. And this one has equal number of vectors pointing outwards and pointing inwards, so it has a zero divergence. So we have to look at different points in the three-dimensional space to understand the divergence at those particular points. Now, in divergence, if you see the mathematical form, we have dodo x of ax plus dodo y of ay and dodo z of az. Now, let us try to understand what exactly this dodo x of ax signify physically. For that, what I have done is I have taken a three dimensional space and I'm, I have tried to represent this ax vector by the arrow line. So those arrow lines represent AX vectors if it is pointing towards the X direction. Uh, this would be AY if it is pointing in the Y direction and this would be AZ if it is pointing towards Z direction and positive negative obviously depends on whether it is following the arrow direction or the opposite. Like if it goes in this direction it will be positive, if it goes in this direction it would be negative. Now let us focus on this particular point. Say this is a particular point. Let us focus on that. So this is the point. So you can see one vector is coming inward and other vector is coming in the opposite direction. So if you look at this particular point, at this particular point there is no source or no thing. So this is a zero divergence situation or this is a it is not a, I mean, this is a kind of x directional zero divergence or this particular uh, differentiation is zero at this point because you have equal number 
coming in equal number coming out now if we want to look at this uh, i mean physical concept dodo y of a y we should look at here so if you see this point one is in the positive y direction one is in the negative y direction so at this point it is nullifying each other so this is a point where dodo y of a y is zero but if you look at this particular point there is a vector which is coming in the negative it which is going in the negative y direction so at this point dodo y of a y will not be zero it will have a negative value because at this point it is not nullifying and then if you look at this particular point you, we have a a x in the positive x direction so in this point we have a dodo x of a x that is uh, staying existing and that it will have a positive value now let us consider at this point so we have two vectors which are opposite to each other and those are acting in the x direction so it does not have any dodo x of a x or dodo x of a x is zero here but it has an existing z directional component that is dodo z of a z is not zero here because it has a certain value a vector is pointing towards but no vector is going out uh, coming inward so it has a positive value of dodo z of a z so i understand that up to this point we are clear uh, with the concept of dot product and also the concept of divergence at a particular point now let us go to the theorem again so i have already mentioned that uh, this is a volumetric integration equated with a surface integration and the volumetric integration of what divergence of a and surface integration of what the a dot ds now let us try to physically visualize how exactly this is related for that particular purpose what i have done i have represented uh, the vectors by few balls the colored balls so each and every balls here represent a vector now what do we do we have taken a physical space a three dimensional space where initially the all the vectors are out out of the box so what can happen at a particular time instance there could be a situation where few balls will be going in and few balls will be going out and overall uh, we'll have a situation where there will be few walls inside and few walls outside. Now try to think from this perspective what it has to do if the balls want to go inside. Suppose this particular ball, if it wants to go inside, it has to cross a particular plane or a particular wall of this rectangular geometry. So that could be equated with the influx or outflux. If it is going in, we'll call it influx. If the balls are coming out, we can call it outflux or in vectorial notation, we can say positive influx or negative influx. Now, we have already told that this influx is mathematically equal to this dot product and where this each balls represent the scalar component of the vector A. If it is moving in the X direction, it, say this is the X direction, in that case this ball represent ax vector if this is the z direction so those balls represent az and if it is moving in the y direction those balls will represent ay so this is the whole concept now we will see how many balls are going inside how many are coming outside and what would be the situation afterwards suppose at a particular time instance what happens all the balls came in and then you see two balls came out i mean it it is coming from this this location and going to that location and here also these two balls came from this particular location and uh, it is now situated at this location so if you look at the simulation again so initially the balls were here then it went inside and you see those balls will be coming there and these balls will be coming here just look at yeah so those two balls are coming in this location and these two balls are coming the bottom from the top so what happens is 
again you try to look at so these three walls are going inside so it is a positive influx these three walls are going inside this is also a positive influx again this three and this four so all are going inside so this is a kind of uh, going inside it and only two 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 walls you can see it is coming out so now let us uh, I mean we have already talked about the crossing the barrier I mean the crossing the walls of this particular physical domain now let us look at the balls which are inside the box after this rearrangement so you see at this particular point initially there was no ball but now there is a ball and you can consider these as a source all these points are a kind of source because initially if you see there was no such balls or no such vectors but suddenly it has come and it is staying inside after this four has gone outside still those balls are staying inside so all those points are kind of point of source so it is a kind of positive divergence so obviously there will be a correlation see just physically understand there were few walls which are going inside few are coming outside few are staying inside so whichever are staying inside so those walls is a kind of divergence and whichever are coming uh, crossing the barriers those are kind of flux influx or outflux that is your a dot ds vector and so there there must be a correlation and this is nothing but the mass balance you can say if we consider the balls as mass so this is nothing but the mass balance but why do we don't call it a mass balance because these are representative of vectors every time this will there will not be a situation where this will be kind of masses and that's why we don't call it mass we call it a vector now let us calculate it say there were 13 balls initially and total crossed the box that is 2 plus 2 I mean after the rearrangement only these two and these two total four balls crossed the barrier to come outside now how many balls stays inside only nine balls so this nine balls which stayed inside i have already told this is a kind of source so the divergence could be equal to you can consider the divergence is equal to positive nine and how many influx and whenever balls are coming in we call it influx so the influx is positive and whichever is coming out we call it negative influx or outflow so 13 ball came in 4 came out so total i mean influx outflux if you just algebraically sum it so we have plus 13 minus 4 equal to 9 so this influx outflux algebraic summation is obviously equal to the ball staying inside which is equivalent to the divergence or point of source so this is the physical concept of gauss divergence theorem i hope uh, you people understand and in the next video, we'll be talking about the derivation of this Gauss divergence theorem. We'll, we'll have more insight into the mathematics. In this video, we we'll just focused on the physical significance so that your visualization become very clear. Uh, so we are stopping here for today. Again, I request you to subscribe to my channel for more updates. Thank you.